Now I'd like to demonstrate a really important rhythm part that we all need to have underneath our fingers in blues. It's known in today's world as the flat tire part. And that's where whoever's playing it, it might be a keyboard player, it might be a guitar player, even a drummer sometimes hits those rhythms as well. And what they are, the upbeats. They're the upbeats of every chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So I'm hitting the upbeats and that's with the shuffle feel. It's not straight. It's the last part of every triplet. One and a two and a three and a four and... You could also count this. It sounds corny, but to nail the feel of this, You'll never go wrong if you use the term like dump, ti dump, ti dump, ti dump, dump, ti dump, ti dump, ti. If you hit right on T, and if you're articulating it vocally as you do it, it's going to help you feel that. Because when we say that, it, it comes out like a triplet. Dump, ti dump, ti dump, ti dump, ti dump. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So... This flat tire part originally came from piano, boogie-woogie piano, right hand. Left hand would be doing this uh, octaves in the... Right hand's doing this... There, every chord consistently an upbeat. Now, if you listen to T-Bone Walker's original recording of Pop Ain't Salty and a whole bunch of other tracks, you'll hear that piano player doing that relentlessly in the groove. They play that medium tempos, fast tempos, and all, but that, that part has to stay on there, rock solid. And if those rhythms start to shift, the groove goes right into the gutter, basically. You need to stay on that groove, the rhythm player that's doing that. In modern day terms, rock players, even guys like, you know, Stevie Ray and everything would be playing these. Um, smacking those offbeat chords. Now you can't hear the rest of where the beat is, but it's one and two and three and four. You can play them as down strokes or as up strokes. When you do them, it doesn't really matter. But I'm saying that this rhythm has been incorporated in uh, older as well as newer music. Guitar players jumped on that in the past few decades. So it's no longer just piano players that play those offbeat chords. And the name flat tire came from the fact that it sounds like when you get a flat tire on a highway, it's the tire, the way the rubber seems to slap the road, bam, 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 it's an uneven triplety kind of feel. So it really, <laughs> flat tire captures the name of the groove kind of pretty well, I would say. So when we play this behind T-Bone Walker, these flat tire chords, we're going to be playing this G6 voicing that we already played. You know, one, three, six, and five on the top four strings. And we're also going to be playing the C9 for the four chord. We've already played that chord. And D9 for the five chord. These are the same voicings that we've already played in some of the previous tracks. Now I'd like to demonstrate this flat tire part with a rhythm section track. This has, you know, bass and drums and everything in it. So it's great for me showing you what the groove really sounds like. In fact, when we play this track in this assignment, you're going to actually be playing this with a metronome click and all because I'm trying to incorporate that very valuable technique of being able to play with a backbeat on two and four. So right now, I'll at least show you how these flat tire parts sounds with, with the full band. <laughs> 